What's up, everyone? Today, we're going to be looking into a topic that leans a little bit more to the heavy side. We're actually going to be talking about the Russian and Ukraine war, but specifically how technology actually played a very pivotal role in the outcome of the war. So on the 24th of February this year, Russia launches a large-scale military invasion on the region of Ukraine. The invasion is seen to be one of the largest in Europe since World War II. Now, the tragedy of wars is not new to the 21st century, as we have seen conflicts in Africa, in the Middle East, and also Eastern Europe. However, the Russian and Ukraine war has seen the emergence of a new wartime instrument, one that has actually played a very, very important role in both the freedom of civilians, as well as the national defense from both countries. That instrument is blockchain technology. Let's look into it. So very quickly, what is blockchain technology? Well, blockchain technology is just a new and innovative way of storing data. Essentially, it is really just a database. Except compared to its traditional centralized peers, blockchain technology is all about being decentralized a way of keeping information that is not owned by one single entity. It is very secure, it's safe, and it's also very efficient in how it keeps this data. Because of blockchain technology, we have subsequent innovations such as cryptocurrencies, and that has actually played a very, very important part inside the war. So today, we're actually going to be looking into three different ways that blockchain technology has played a part in the war. The first one is cryptocurrency. With Ukraine under attack, the Ukrainian economy becomes severely unstable. On the day of the invasion, the Ukrainian president actually announces some emergency financial measures to try and stabilize the economy. This includes suspending electronic cash transfers, the suspension of foreign currency withdrawals, and also setting a withdrawal limit of 100,000 hryvnia per day. With the government's intention of trying to prevent a devaluation of the hryvnia, a lot of Ukrainians actually lose access to basic financial services. One report actually describes a citizen trying to flee to Poland, but they don't actually have access to their bank account, and thus they couldn't actually purchase a ticket. The solution ends up being cryptocurrency. The citizen actually finds someone to actually exchange Bitcoin for Polish cash. This ends up allowing them to purchase a bus ticket and to flee the country. You see, something very, very important in cryptocurrency is this idea of censorship resistance. Censorship resistance is all about this idea of not being able to prevent anyone from participating in some kind of network. So unlike centralized entities like governments and banks, Bitcoin is always available for anyone to use at all times. Another way that blockchain technology has actually played a part in the war is through DAOs. DAOs simply stand for Decentralized Autonomous Organizations. These organizations are fully governed by computer code and self-executing programs. No one controls or owns these organizations. DAOs have actually played a huge part in foreign aid to the Ukrainian governments, refugees, and civilians. People all around the world were able to send money to these DAOs, and this money was redirected to the people in need. A notable example is the Ukraine DAO, which managed to raise $7 million in a span of five days. You see, the key difference between these DAOs and some traditional charity is that the DAO was actually set up in a matter of hours. In comparison, traditional charities usually need a few months to begin their operations. Furthermore, because DAOs actually use blockchain technology, we can also be assured that they are transparent and actually doing their jobs. Again, we can compare this to traditional charities where there's usually very, very little transparency and sometimes we don't even know where the money is going to. The final use case of blockchain technology in the war is this idea of decentralized data storage. You see, there are many, many reports which are detailing the increasing amount of evidence that war crimes are actually being committed by the Russian military. A very common historical problem that wars face is actually the destroying of evidence. No matter how many war crimes are committed, a lot of them don't end up being prosecuted. A German-based blockchain company called Arweave is actually setting up something called the Permaweb. The Permaweb actually allows anyone to upload any piece of information or data and it actually stays there forever. So what a lot of people all over the world are doing are uploading any piece of information related to the war, including those of war crimes. This actually allows prosecution efforts after the war to be a much more straightforward and transparent process. 
a first in a large scale conflict, blockchain technology has been used for many different purposes. As a recap, this includes access to basic financial services, it includes foreign aid, and also the permanent storage of data. And thus, more and more people around the world are starting to see blockchain technology and its subsequent innovations as more than something just like a speculative asset. It actually has practical usage. So again, we do understand that today's recap leans a little bit more to the heavier side, but hopefully everyone understands and can learn that blockchain technology is truly changing the way that humans interact with each other. Hopefully we can see the technology being used in positive ways other than just finance. We hope you enjoyed today's recap and hopefully you've learned something new. We'll catch you in the next one.